Hello, everyone. Welcome. You were in the right place if you have come to the senior thesis workshop. We'll begin soon. Make yourself comfortable. Hey, hi everyone, welcome. Um, I know that uh, we wanna give time for people to filter into the event, uh, but in the interest of making sure that we keep to a timely schedule, um, we are going to get started. Um, I want to welcome everybody here tonight. My name is Lisa Brundage. I am Director of Teaching, Learning and Technology at Macaulay Honors College. Um, you may call me Lisa or you may call me Dr. Brundage. Either one is totally fine. Um, just wanted to give you a little bit of information about some of the logistics tonight. Um, we are going to hear from a few um, panelists about options for the senior thesis and experiences about the senior thesis. Um, and then we're going to take some question and answer. So there are two ways that you can ask a question. Um, one is to use the raise hand down at the bottom of your toolbar. You should see a kind of a, a waving hand at you. Um, and the other is to use the Q&A box. Um, so if you'd like to type your question and um, so you don't lose your train of thought, for instance, you can go ahead and put it there. And then once we see it, we will let you know um, if we will answer it live with one of our panelists or um, if you have an answer like the one that we just got a few minutes ago about whether or not we're recording, which we are, um, then you might see a typed answer come up there. Um, and so we are gonna listen to our panelists and then we will take question and answer. And right now I'd like to pass it over to Nathaniel for um, some welcoming remarks. Hi everyone, um, welcome to the Senior Thesis Workshop. My name is Nathaniel and I'm a psychology student at City College. I'd like to thank you all for coming today. Um, our first panelist will be Dean Ugaretz who will give an overview about the Senior Thesis uh, requirement. So without further ado, welcome Dean Ugaretz. Uh, 
Thank you, Netanel, and uh, welcome to everybody. I'm happy to see some familiar faces, uh, familiar names, I guess, in the participant list. So it's good to see you all. I'm going to be very brief and then turn it over to my colleagues. I want to speak generally about the, uh, the Macaulay uh, thesis requirement. Since Macaulay started it, uh, about 20 years ago, we've really felt that it's part of being an honor student is to take the opportunity to go more in depth to some kind of intellectual or academic subject. Um, it's it's common feature for most honors colleges to make this kind of requirement. And the idea is that as honor students, you have greater capabilities, you're able to pursue a subject uh, more deeply and with a, a kind of more almost professional level of research skill. So I'm gonna share my screen for a minute just to show you uh, the Macaulay handbook. And I wanna talk about the general requirements, but before I get to that, I should say really clearly to everybody, this is the bottom line takeaway from tonight. If you remember nothing else, remember this, when considering what to do about your senior, senior thesis, you must speak to your advisor on your campus. Requirements on campuses uh, vary, and it's really important that you speak to your advisor early and often. That should be your first, first option. So don't forget everything else you hear tonight, but if you do, remember that one thing, you're going to speak to your advisor, okay? So given that, here's uh, the screen that shows us the, uh, the general Macaulay uh, requirements for good standing and graduation. This is on the page, and I'm gonna put the link in the chat, or no, I guess I'm not, but uh, one of us will put the link in the chat in a few minutes and you'll see the, the link. Uh, it's the community.macaulay.cuny.edu slash handbook. And then you go to policies and under policies, you go to good standing and graduation requirements. And then if you scroll down, uh, you will see Macaulay students must complete, whoops, Macaulay students must complete honors in their major and a senior thesis or capstone project. So that's the, the general generic requirement. Everyone has to do that, honors in their major and a senior thesis or capstone project. But what if that's not the right option for you? Uh, there's various reasons why that might happen and I'm not gonna go into all the different reasons, but that's what we're here to talk about tonight. What are the options? Uh, the, 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 the clear general easy option is to do honors in your major and a senior thesis or capstone project. But if those options are not available with special or with special permission, even if they are available, students may with the approval of the provost, guess what, that's me. So you just need to email me for that approval. Uh, you may choose among these three options. One, take two extra upper division honors classes on any campus, including at Macaulay. That does not mean your Macaulay seminars. And it does not mean the honors courses that are already required for your major or for your requirements on your campus. It means two extra upper division honors classes. They can be anything. They don't have to be connected to your major or to your uh, classes that you've taken before. We wanna encourage you to experiment with those two. And obviously you have to take them and pass them with a B or, B, uh, B or better. Uh, that's not written in there, but you do have to do that. Another option, is to enroll in Macaulay's springboard class. That is a two semester commitment. You can't enter mid-year. You've got to start it in the first fall semester of your senior year. Uh, and so obviously you have to register the spring before that. You're gonna hear a lot more about springboard in a couple of minutes, so I'm not gonna get into that. And then the third option is to complete an independent senior thesis project at your home campus. Um, that may be working with a professor to do independent research, though that's the kind of catch-all that is gonna need a lot of special approval and special attention. So the first two options are kind of clear what they are and what they might be and how, how to do them. And then that third option is one that's uh, gonna take some extra work and connections on your part, but it's there in case you need it. So basically that's how this works. Everyone does an, an a, uh, honors in the major and a senior thesis or capstone project, but there are options if those options are not available or if for some reason, they don't fit for you. And remember that number one takeaway is, I don't hear it because you're all muted, but if, if you were not muted, I would hear everybody right now saying, talk to your advisor. So make sure you talk to your advisor. And I'll hand off to my colleagues now. Thank you for your time. Oh, we will definitely take questions at the end. Yes, we will have Q&A session at the end, like Dean Ugarets mentioned. 
Um, thank you, Dean Ugaritz, for giving that overview. Um, next, I would like to invite Dr. Brundage and Dr. Reese to give an overview of Springboard. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to start out and then I'll pass off to Professor Reese. Um, generally, the two of us co-teach Springboard together. Um, this year, I am cycling into a different class that I also teach at the Graduate Center. So I'm not this year, but um, I probably will be back next year. And we've taught it together for a few years. So um, some basics about Springboard, you would need to know just a few things going into it. The first is that it's a year long course. Um, we don't allow, we have had situations where people for personal reasons have not been able to finish in the spring. And of course that is at your discretion. We are here to support you getting done, but you can't take just the spring portion just to do a paper and then go. It's really a community. It's a place where we work on a research process, defining a topic, um, understanding your discipline, like really getting into the, you know, the meat of it, um, and then move into writing a really fun and innovative and interdisciplinary paper and doing some kind of public scholarship project that's attached to it. So that's, that's the first thing to know about Springboard. You need to be able to commit to it for an entire academic year and take it in the fall and in the spring. Um, the other thing that is really good to know, well, there's lots of other things, but the next thing that you should know about Springboard um, is that it's an interdisciplinary class. So we take students from all disciplines, mostly in the social sciences and humanities, because Professor Reese and I do not happen to be scientists. Um, we've talked in, on a few occasions about having a science-oriented springboard course for students in STEM fields, but um, right now we want to just be clear about what we usually do inside of the course. Um, and we invite people to really engage with each other across those disciplines. Um, we really emphasize being able to communicate to a broad audience, um, to be able to do a, a topic that might not fit inside of a traditional um, discipline or home department, and to also really kind of push the limits about what you are expecting to get out of a research paper. You know, it's really something that people take on as a, as a personal project and not just, um, you know, requirements that they need to get out of the way. Um, we do a lot of research, we do a lot of writing, and I think that something that's really, really special about Springboard is that it is really a community. Um, we meet together every week, whether we are online or in person, we get to know each other, we get to know all of the topics that everybody is working on. Um, we can give really constructive feedback and get people kind of on track with what they need to accomplish. Um, but we you know, also can hold each other accountable for getting the work done. Um, and I think do that with a lot of, um, of gentleness, at, but also kind of um, really high academic standards. And I think that being part of a community that you can build trust in through the writing process, through sharing your work, through revising it, through taking suggestions in a really open way, um, is something that is really exciting. And that is one of the things that I love the most about teaching Springboard. Um, we also, we, we take students who are at a wide variety of places um, in their own intellectual process when the course starts. So some students come in with a really, really clear idea of something that they want to do for Springboard. They had this idea, you know, when they were much younger, they've been waiting for an opportunity to study it in depth and they have Springboard and they are ready to go as soon as they hit the classroom. But we also have students who come in with a much more vague idea and that is completely okay. Um, you know, they might know a particular field that they want to do some work in, but not um, the detailed topics that they want to discuss. And we make room for finding that. Um, we spend, um, Professor Reese can talk about this, but a, a lot of time refining topics, kind of limiting the scope so that people aren't taking on a book length project in something that is just two semesters of study um, and making sure that everybody has, you know, kind of supportive guardrails for being able to do that. Um, we do something that I'll let uh, Professor Reese talk a little, little bit more, but we do something called a tinjarp. Um, this is not just a research paper. Um, and usually that is building some kind of, um, you know, it can be an artwork, it can be a website, um, it can be some kind of an interactive um, that you build, but we, uh, we want you to explore um, communication, not just through um, a paper, which you will produce, but through other means of communication. Um, and I just want to come back once again to what a wonderful community it is and how much fun it is, despite all of the hard work. 
Um, and so I'm going to turn it over to Professor Reese to um, augment and maybe even correct anything that I said. And we're also going to hear from um, two Springboard students about their experience in the course. Thank you. Uh, no, I have nothing to correct what you said. In fact, my, I have a list here of what I want to say, and I feel like you covered everything on the list. But there's a couple of other things that I can um, that I can say. Um, I, earlier, when we started this class in the fall, some students had come in with the with the misguided information that these were 50 page papers or more. 50 pages, some people thought 75 pages. I don't know where people got this like crazy idea. This is not a master's thesis. This is a, you know, your senior thesis from college. It's much more scaled down. I, and people always want to know what the page length is. And, <laughs> and I know that's going to be a question. So I'll just say it now, but we don't really go by page length. So it, this isn't even hard and fast rule either. But I would say generally they're in the 20 to 25 page range. It's much more important to have it be good. Like we want these papers to be that if you submitted it to a journal, not, well, one of the people who we're gonna hear from tonight did submit hers to a journal and, and she's gonna talk about that. Susan Evans is gonna talk about that. But you know, we're gonna write it and rewrite it and rewrite it until by the end of uh, the spring semester, you are really proud of this piece of work that you could send to anybody and know that it's good because it's been peer reviewed and reviewed by the professors and discussed you know, so much. So if anybody is saying that there are these really long things, please disabuse them of that uh, information because that's not true. Um, also, uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to piggyback on what you said about defining topics. I would say most people don't know what their topic is and the first few weeks of class we kind of go around the room saying, well, what interests you? And this year we have a student doing something about Comic-Con. He's really interested in that. And he wanted to know like what's happening with Comic-Con during the pandemic. And that's what he's doing his paper on. I don't even know what his discipline is or what his, maybe it's political science. I'm not really sure what his major is. It, but that's the good thing about Springboard. You don't have to pick a topic that's tied to your major. You can do something else, which is nice. Um, also, we have um, every year we apply to a regional conference of Honors College students and we hope that everybody gets accepted and is able to present their paper. Um, in the past, you know, before the pandemic, we actually went places. We went to Baltimore and um, I can't even remember the other places, but Providence. Providence, right, we went to mm -hmm. Providence. Last year it was supposed to be in Albany, but we uh, couldn't do that. And this year, I, I don't need, this year they just scheduled it online from the get-go. Um, but next year, hopefully we will be able to go somewhere. And anyway, in the, in the fall, how the class is structured is that in the fall semester, we work on defining your topics and by the end of the, sem and doing some research and we give, we give a lot of attention to how to do research. We don't just leave you to your own devices to Google your topic. We really go over how, how you find things in the library, you know, on your computer via the library. <laughs> and then um, by the end of the semester, you write an abstract for the conference and we submit it. And we, again, that also, we write it and rewrite it. We put people in groups, we call them accountability buddies. And um, your accountability buddies, you'll become very familiar with their topic. They'll become very familiar with yours. And we submit it uh, at the end of the semester and we find out over the break uh, who has been accepted. And we've had very, we've had excellent success with uh, acceptance into this conference. Um, this year, everybody in the class got accepted. So um, yeah, everybody needs an accountability buddy, it's true. Um, so that's very exciting. And then when we go to the conference, we go to each other's panels and support each other, more so than any other class I teach. And I, I teach other upper division seminars, but in this class, people really do become good friends because you're going through something that's so intense and, um, you know, you have each other to bond with, and it's a really great feature of the class. When I was in college, I was on my own to write my senior thesis. I did an independent senior thesis, and I had no idea what I was doing, and I just had to keep sending 
drafts to my advisor and it was actually quite isolating and my uh, my senior thesis wasn't nearly as good and polished as um, the students at Macaulay's, uh, the students at Macaulay. Um, okay, one other, let me see, did I have anything else? Do I, do I have another minute to just mention a, a little bit more about the TINJARP? Okay, so the TINJARP, that stands for this is this is not just a regular research paper. You have to get that extra R in there for regular research paper, um, and that really varies by um, you know according to what your project is. And again, you don't have to worry about that when you first start because we we have a, a TLC who works with us and um, who works with our class who really understands all different kinds of ways of digital interesting ways to present your topic and make it public facing. And I know that Ariel and Susan both had interesting tinjarps, so they'll tell you a little bit more about that. But if you hear people talking, you know, you might be thinking, what the heck's a tinjarp? And that's what it stands for. Um, and, you know, again, along with everything in the class, we really, the, the class will help you with everything. The class is very scaffolded. We have a a very um, detailed and directive syllabus. We don't leave you to your own devices. There's something due every week, either you're writing something or you're reading your peers' work and responding to them. Um, so if you are the kind of person who you know, needs direction to get your own independent work done, then this class is great for you. If you're somebody who really you know, hates all that, then I would say don't take the class because we really, that's the whole class is built that way. Um, in a scaffolded and interactive way so that everybody is helping each other. Wow, I think I talked so fast. Let me see if there's anything else. Uh, no, I think, I'm, I think I'm done. Oh, by the end, I'll say one last word. By the end, you really are an expert on your topic. So our students right now, oh, in fact, I need to put this in the chat. On uh, March 19th, um, in fact, I'll share my screen. On March 19th, there's an event um, It's uh, a week from Friday. And it's here, the time is right here, March 19th from 11 a.m. to 12 to noon, so just an hour. And this is my co-teacher this year, Logan McBride. Um, and it's an event where three students are going to be doing practice presentations for the conference. So that's what's happening this week in class. So this event is just gonna kind of come into our class and you'll listen to three students talk for 12 minutes each. That's how long the conference presentations are. Um, so you'll really get to see um, a little bit more, more than what you're gonna have tonight. And if you, so if you go to this link, you can sign up. Thanks. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much, Dr. Reese and Dr. Brundage, for that brief overview. Um, next, we're going to have two um, Springboard alums present their project. Present their projects. First, we're going to have Ariel Abdi. So feel free to turn on your camera. Perfect. Thanks, um, Natanal and uh, Lisa <laughs> um, and uh, Dr. Reese. Um, yeah. So. Uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about what I do now and then about my project. Um, I like, I could send you all the link. I looked at it for the first time yesterday um, before this when, um, uh, yeah, before like knowing I'd have to make this uh, like brief presentation. It was kind of nice and uh, made me smile to see my project after like, I guess now a year. So anyway, my name is Ariel Avgi, um, class of 2019, um, went to Macaulay at City College. I studied applied mathematics and minored in earth and atmospheric science. So I took springboard mainly because um, for my major, um, as Dr. Ugarth explained previously, like you need to complete an honors requirement. And so for math, that was three semesters of independent study. At the time I was um, also for those at City College, a Noah Crest fellow. Um, so I was doing independent um, research in particular on the impact of um, co-occurring weather extremes on croplands. And I really enjoyed that. And the idea of taking on um, three semesters of independent study in like pure mathematics was not something that 
really got me going. And so my advisor told me about Springboard. Um, and I would say like kind of echoing what was said earlier, it really is um, about what's best for you um, in terms of what you choose to do for your honors thesis. So because that wasn't something that worked for me, I opted to do Springboard and try to incorporate the research that I was currently doing into a senior thesis project. And so my um, Springboard ended up being a comparative look at how um, climate change um, is communicated to different audiences. So um, I ended up writing my um, like academic research paper on the impact of co-occurring weather extremes on wheat crop lands. Um, and then in addition, wrote a independent, um, like, I guess you'd call it like a magazine article as if it were to be published in like a Times um, or other kind of general publication for general audiences on the same topic. Um, and then my tinge art um, was basically this comparative view where I looked side by side at what does an introduction look like for um, an academic audience versus for a general audience. And I kind of went back and forth between every section of my journal article and how I translated it for a general audience. Um, and I would say that it was fun, <laughs> echoing what um, was said earlier. The community was great, uh, still in touch with a lot of those people. Um, and I would say one of the best things about this like spring as a course is like, I chose the skills I want to develop, if that makes sense. Um, so definitely research. I think you'd build that in probably a lot of the honors thesis options that are available across the campuses. But being able to communicate um, uh, technical information to general audiences helps me in my day-to-day -day job now. Um, so I'm an operational risk analyst at Goldman Sachs. And like a lot of my everyday is taking really technical information as I cover engineering and communicating it to senior audiences who don't necessarily have that kind of technical background and expertise. Um, so I don't think I knew it at the time, but definitely um, like looking back, doing Springboard helped me build a lot of skill sets that I find valuable in my day to day now. So I would say, um, you know, for those of you who are interested in Springboard, also like I probably should have done this at the time, but um, especially if you know what you want to do post grad. Um, or you already are have plans for you know what you're doing post grad. Um, thinking about you know your options for your senior thesis um, and what works best for you and like you know what do you want to, what do you want out of it essentially is how I would and did choose um, to do Springboard. Awesome, thank you so much, Ariel. That was really great. Um, Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, next, we're going to have another um, Springboard alum present their project. Project. So without further ado, Susan, feel free to turn on your camera. Awesome. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, so I'm Susan. I graduated from City College as a history major in spring 2020, so like the pandemic semester. So that was also really interesting to do um, Springboard, like the switch. Um, uh, my project uh, was exploring how sexual violence was talked about um, in the early 20th century on college campuses. So I looked specifically at Barnard College and Columbia University using their archives. And the goal of my project was um, to extend the typical historical timeline of campus sexual violence, which usually starts in the mid to late 20th century to kind of give us a better understanding of how like uh, pervasive rape culture is within the US. So that was the goal. And I feel like I accomplished something with that, which I'm proud of. Um, and that's really about my project. I want to talk mostly about why I really was drawn to Springboard and what I got out of it. Um, for mostly for me, it was, it was just a dedicated time and place for your thesis. Like it schedules everything for you, which was holy for me. Like it was, it made everything much less stressful. Um, and on top of that, um, as, um, mentioned before, it's really a collaborative cohort. I like to think of it as like a group project without the horrifying aspects of what a group project is because it's about yourself and your own research, but you have these people, both professors and students to really help you work on your project and kind of give you that confidence throughout the whole process. Um, and something else, which I think is the most important is that it's a full year like that 
is so crucial, I think, for good, thorough research that you're proud of is spending more than one semester because it helps you realize it's kind of a bigger undertaking, but it gives you so much more time. And like having that first semester to do, especially for me as someone who's doing a history project or really any kind of project, the time I had to do archival work and to just have fun and really explore and make mistakes and figure out what questions I really wanted to ask was so important. Um, for my Tinjarp, I, again, my Tinjarp wasn't as good as I wanted it to be because it was the, the pandemic had just started. And so it kind of went on the back burner a little bit for me. Um, but the class is very adaptable, which is, which I'm always so grateful for. Um, but I kind of made a timeline to what I talked about with extending the timeline of campus sexual violence. I made an interactive timeline where you can see, um, I used, I got to like showcase uh, different pictures from the archive I had, which I always love to do. And so that was a really great thing. Um, and I love that I still have that timeline resource on my computer that I use just for fun sometimes and like poke around with it. Um, and overall at Springboard, I had fun in that class. I genuinely look forward to it every week. It was like my little Friday morning afternoon escape kind of. Um, it was really just a great time uh, and it made the project so much easier to do. And it really just gave me that confidence because I knew how much time and effort I put into the project. And so I was like, this has to be, this has to mean something because I've, I'm really proud of it. Uh, so many people have read it. Um, and yeah, just that confidence was so crucial for me specifically because I, I mean, it's for everyone, but um, I ended up submit, deciding to submit my paper to a couple undergraduate um, history journals after um, graduating. And it's gonna, my paper is gonna be published um, in Columbia University's undergraduate uh, journal of history, which I'm really excited about. I think maybe in like a week or two, I think my final edits are due like Sunday. Um, so <laughs> been working on that. Um, but yeah, even like looking over my project again, like I'm just really proud of it. It's like, as we said, it's like a 20 page, um, like 25 pages. It's not this like massive tome or anything. Um, and I was just like surprised with myself. Like I think the biggest thing with Springboard is it gives you the right amount of time to work on a project. And it really gives you like confidence in yourself as like a student and like a writer and a researcher. And that's what I'm most grateful for from it. Awesome. Thank you very much, Susan and Ariel. Both of your projects sound very, very interesting. Um, thank you, Dr. Reese and Dr. Brundage. Um, I think you guys should consider renaming Springboard to Tinjarp. Um, anyways, now let's open up to Q&A. Um, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to put those in the chat. Um, our panelists are gonna go question by question and answer them. Um, so yeah. Okay, so if you type the question into the Q&A box that we indicated we are going to ask live, or I'm mean, sorry, answer live, um, what we're gonna do is give you permission to unmute yourself, um, and then you can ask the question directly to the panelists. Um, however, if you don't feel like doing that, uh, then just leave yourself muted or you can type into the chat box that you would like us to ask the question instead. And then um, Zobia will ask the question for you of our panelists. So um, the first question that we are going to take is from, um, let's see, I'm looking through the list, uh, Angelina uh, Medina. So Angelina, you should have permission to talk now. Yes, hello. Um, my question is, can an independent study be counted as a senior thesis? I, I think I'm gonna take that one. That That is one of the options uh, that's available to you. Um, some, of, of course, I'll say it again, make sure you talk to your advisor about that option. Uh, and I'll make sure that there's a, uh, a qualification there. Sometimes people do like a one credit or a one semester, one credit independent study. That's not the kind of thing that's going to count for your requirement. It really does have to be a substantial uh, piece of work that uh, ideally is approximately two, two courses, two semesters uh, worth of time and energy. So as long as it's an independent study that meets that criterion, that is a possibility. 
Thank you, um, Dean Ugaritz. And I see, um, just wanted to put a note that if I mispronounce anybody's name while I'm asking you to ask your question, please correct me. Um, but I see two questions from, from um, Fatima Alam, and you should have permission to ask your questions now. All right, um, Fatima, we're going to go ahead and um, pose those questions to the panel for you. Um, Sylvia, would you like to read the questions from Fatima? Yeah, of course. So Fatima, the first question she's asking is, can an honors research course count for the capstone? Um, you know, that that's one that I'm going to have a hard time because I, without Fatima clarifying exactly what that means, I, I don't want to give a, a fully uh, confirmed answer. Uh, so, oh, hi everyone. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't Thank unmute you, earlier. Okay. okay. So, what kind of uh, course are you talking about here? So specifically, I'm thinking of like a five thousand level research course for my major. So that would be like a five thousand three W, like a writing intensive course for the bio major, in which I would be working with like the PI of my lab and like writing a paper with her. So I was wondering if that also counts for this requirement. That that would be a good possibility. I, I think we'd want to look carefully at exactly what uh, what you were doing. So that would be one where I'd, I'd want you to uh, talk to your advisor and get your advisor sign off and then email me and we, we could uh, see if that could be approved. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then do you want to um, ask us your other question? Oh yeah. Um, so like the 5003W, I think it's like a semester course, but I feel like a project like this would probably take the entire year to accomplish. So I was just wondering like if the thesis project for everyone is a year long process or if it's just a springboard thing. No, I, ideally a thesis should be a year long process in terms of the amount of work and energy. Some people do compress it into one semester, but I, I think, as you heard from uh, Ariel, in some majors, it's it's three semesters. Um, so we want to just make sure that you're doing real substantive work. Okay. And I'm I'm going to tack on to that that it really there is a lot of variation across departments and campuses. And so again, talking to your advisor um, is your always your first stop. Um, and you know, I think that's something that both um, Ariel and Susan were talking about is how good it feels to have a full year to explore your project. And so that's something else to keep in mind that, you know, finding a way that you can give yourself sort of breathing space around it and time to get really in depth um, can make the process more enjoyable and more rewarding for you. So it's something else to keep in mind um, when you're thinking about how to configure your, um, your uh, capstone requirement. Um, I see that there is a question from um, Kavil Shah. Um, and again, correct me if I said your name incorrectly, and you should have permission to speak now. Uh, yes. Um, so my question was that are the uh, for the option with the upper level division classes, is, are those classes uh, like equivalent to like graduate level courses or something like that? Uh, hi, Kevin. Good to see you again. Hi, yeah. um, <laughs> uh, No, they're not graduate level courses. Uh, upper division is considered anything in the junior or senior level of the undergraduate period. Uh, so generally that's anything with, uh, different campuses use different numbering systems for, for, for our Macaulay classes, that would be anything with a, a 300 level or above. Some campuses, they may call that a, a 3000 or a 4000 or something, but it would be any course that uh, would generally be for juniors or seniors. Um, so, for example, the, the course that you're taking right now, last night, uh, mm -hmm. that, that is an upper division class. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I would add something onto that, which is if you're thinking about, you know, how, you know, how when you're always like in, you know, like fifth grade, your teachers are like, well, you got to do this now because when you get to middle school, it's going to be really hard. And then when you're in eighth grade, they say you have to figure out how to do this because high school is going to be hard. And then in high school, they say you have to do these things because college is going to be super hard. Um, I would say if, 
the question is not about like credits and how they apply, but if it's about what kind of engagement and challenge you get from the class, I would say that a class like, like Springboard, that there is a depth of engagement there that I also see with graduate students. Um, I'm, I'm teaching a graduate class right now, so I feel like I can say this confidently. Um, so, you know, I think that if you're thinking like, you know, am I gonna be cut out for graduate school based on my performance in my senior thesis? Um, I would not be concerned that there is like a huge level jump when you go to, um, when you go to graduate school. I think that um, it is a little bit different but that um, a lot of the ways that the sophistication that I've seen from springboard students really rivals what I have seen in graduate students. And um, I think that that is something that is, is really exciting. And I also think that it's part of the process that we build in to, to make that time for that sort of engagement. Would it be okay if I, I mean, I'm just looking at these Q and A's and there's a couple that I would like to answer, but they already, I, I don't know who said it. So I'm just gonna, maybe somebody else can see who said yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, well, yes, absolutely. We'll, we'll keep on going through them and then we will, um, we, can, we can kind of jump in as they, as they come up. Okay, so the, uh, the, the one about, there was two having to do with the time of the class. So yes, it is gonna be still Friday mornings from. 10 to 12:40. We don't know yet if it's going to be virtual or um, online, uh, virtual or in person. It depends on what happens with the vaccines and the pandemic and everything else. And when Macaulay makes their decision about that, um, every you know, all the students will find out. So for right now, and that's still up in the air. And then there was another question about: Can you do something creative? And yes, you can do something creative. And in fact, we've had a person. Uh, make a film about uh, the politics in um, the politics of race in South Africa. That was a really interesting film. We had, I mean, they had already been to South Africa. They had already done uh, a lot of uh, videotaping and obviously we can't send students in the middle of the semester to South Africa or any place like that, but that person already had it. Um, this semester, um, we have somebody doing a photography project having to do with grief um, after her father's death from Alzheimer's. And so how we work that kind of a project is that you still have to write, there's still a writing component, even though you're doing something creative. It, it won't be as long as um, what the other students are doing, but like an artist statement or something that will undergo revision, just like uh, what the other students are doing. But yes, it can, you can do a creative project. Oh, and there was one about game theory or something. Somebody had something about gaming, um, game development. Um, I'm hesitant yes. to say, <laughs> I guess, I guess. Uh, here, here's the thing, yes. it has to be, it has, you have to, if, if you wanna do that, you have to make it intelligible for people who don't know anything about your topic, which is me. I don't know anything about game development. Um, so it can't be like filled with code. Do you know what I mean? So it, 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 can't, it can't be something that an expert in game development would want to read about, you know, because that would be too sophisticated for us and for your accountability buddies. Um, but if you want to write something about, um, you know, the politics around game development or some kind of angle that uh, emphasizes the humanities or social sciences, then you certainly can. Let me pick up on that because I think Professor Reese is making a really good point. Springboard is about looking both ahead to your future research and your future career, but also looking out to the wider world. So what Professor Reese is saying about making your subject intelligible to a wider audience goes for whatever subject you're talking about. Uh, it's, it, even if you're writing about Professor Reese's specialty, um, it still has <laughs> to be accessible to people who do not know anything about that. If you really wanna do a, a thesis that's in your specific field and for experts in your field, that's not a springboard project. That's something you should be doing with the faculty and in, in your department, uh, in your major. Uh, yeah, I can so. give a little example of this. So when we had a student who was a chemistry major and she wanted to do a springboard. And the reason why she wanted to was because she didn't want to do a chemistry 
thesis. Like she was kind of done with chemistry, but she still knew a lot about chemistry. So she ended up doing her thesis about how things, how misleading the advertising is around uh, beauty products that say no chemicals, chemical free. And she showed how everything is made from chemicals. But it was, anybody could have understood this. I mean, I haven't had chemistry since college, but I was able to understand it. There were no equations or anything like that. So that's, that kind of gives you the difference. The questions are coming in a little bit quickly. So I am going to try to see if there's a chance to combine a few of them. I'm so sorry that we are going to break protocol. Um, there's a couple that are pretty quick. So when can you apply for Springboard? So right now it's, you don't have to apply for Springboard. You can just register for it. So if you're gonna be a senior next year and you know you wanna take Springboard when it's time to do your registration, then just register for Springboard. Um, and if we need to add more sections of Springboard because everybody wants to take it after this event, then we will be happy to have that problem. Um, so if you wanna take Springboard, sign up for it. It's just a regular class. You don't have to apply. Um, and let me see, um, and I'm kind of going through these. Um, and is there a way to get help figuring out where we can publish our theses? Um, the goal of Springboard isn't to do a publication, but we can definitely support you in thinking about places that might be good um, for you to submit them. So um, that's not a major part of the course, but it is something that if you're interested in doing that we will try to support. In fact, um, if you're doing the, yeah. the honors conference uh, hosts an undergraduate journal, and that's that right, would be right, nice right. That's a great outlet for it. And that goes um, for even if you're not doing a springboard project, if you're just doing a, a regular thesis, we can help you uh, find uh, places to publish it. Although, if again, if you're in a specific discipline, the professors in your discipline might be the best resources. Yeah. But we can help guide you to them too. Drop me an email. Yeah. Um, I also see a question about, can you do a literature review for the thesis? So if you're in Springboard doing some kind of a literature review where you look at kind of the scholarship that has been done on the topics that you're exploring is part of the research process for doing the paper. Um, doing just a literature review by itself um, would not be enough for Springboard, but I can't speak to the particularities of other um, departments if you're doing one within your major department. So that would also be something to explore um, with advisors in the department that you are majoring. Um, if that, I hope that clears that one up. Um, we also have a question here from um, Hafsa about what if you're a double major and one of your majors offers um, a, a um, honors and the other one does not. Um, are you required then to do the thesis and the one that offers honors? Um, so, Dean Ugris, do you want to talk about that one? That would be a good, a good uh, candidate for Springboard, uh, mm -hmm. I would say, um, because uh, unless you want to do your thesis in the one that offers honors, um, so that that that's the kind of exactly like doesn't fit into a narrow box person who should be looking at Springboard. Um, if, uh, I'm assuming that you want to do the one that doesn't offer the the uh, the thesis option. Could I answer the one by uh, Shaul Picker about the uh, transportation in New York? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, sure. the question is that he, uh, he already has a topic about transportation and wants to write a book about the history of the subway and how can he do it if it has to be interdisciplinary? It doesn't have to be interdisciplinary. It, you, you, you get to be interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary, unlike other classes. Like if you were doing a history, if this was a history thesis and, you know, your advisor might say, I really want you to keep it historical, but, and that would be fine. That's what I did in college. Um, but if let's just say you get really into this and you want to include as part of your uh, springboard, like your own thoughts when you're writing on the subway, you know, like you, we, we once had a, a student who interspersed some historical material about something and then with a few pages of kind of journal entries about, you know, her thoughts on the topic. And it sounds, it sounds like it was bad, but it was fantastic. Um, so you, you might end up making it more interdisciplinary than you even think in the beginning. But if you, if it's kind of straight historical, you know, I'm a historian, so I know how to advise that and help you, you know, guide you in that direction. And that would be totally fine. I should add that we do have one of your classmates, uh, 
who is also researching the subway and currently writing a thesis. We're not going to expose people's email addresses to everybody on, on the chat here, but you could use Club McCall or that student will use Club Macaulay to get in touch with you, so. Okay, thanks. Um, this is a question that I think is directed towards Ariel. Um, it's another one from Fatima. Um, and it is, how did you manage writing two different papers? Um, I'm thinking of doing something similar because I don't know if the work that we're doing in our lab is what I want to do um, with further research and I might be more interested in other topics. So Ariel, do you want to talk about your experience with doing that? Sure, yeah. Um, so in all fairness, I think I tried to like finesse my way into Springboard with an already done paper at some level because I was planning on writing one. The result was not that. The result was like a very different project altogether, which was really focused on um, communicating, um, communicating science to general audiences and kind of doing that comparative um, review that I discussed earlier. Um, so one was like already in the works, I would say, and the other, and this goes to um, the previous point made about how like the, the length of the paper and the amount of writing is really varied depending on what the project is. Um, so the one journal article ended up being like 20 with, with citations, probably close to 20 pages, um, but that was to be expected and was already in the work while the other was probably like six pages, but in the style of, like I said, like a Times Magazine kind of article with graphics and everything else. Um, so you're all Macaulay students, you could do it. Um, <laughs> I would say it's no more work that I'm sure you're already putting into your other classes and other extracurricular activities and everything else. Um, but also, and sorry, I don't see the question, so I can't say, um, I don't know whose name it is that to refer the question to, but basically I would say that, um, yes, it was two papers, but depending on what it is that you're doing, it could be, it doesn't necessarily have to be like, essentially, I think the first semester of Springboard is all about like, it's like trying to define what your research question is. Um, so I don't think I actually came to the conclusion that what I wanted to do was about communicating, like the, the science communication part of my project. I don't think I even thought about till probably well into the first semester. So I'd say like, if you're thinking about doing something similar or incorporating current work that you're doing into another kind of project, or like you have an interest in that, in that space, then Springboard could be a good option for you. And it's okay if you don't know what it is right away. Um, it could totally and probably will evolve into something else later on. Thank you. Um, I think that was a perfect answer. Um, I also, there's a few questions, Senior Grits, that maybe you can help us with about um, honors credits and if um, Springboard counts towards your required number of honors um, courses and if you are in Springboard, if you're also required to do honors in your own program, um, so do you want to do you want to try to tackle those? And also, sure. the first question: I see Winter has a question along these lines about can students work with faculty on their home campus while simultaneously enrolling in Springboard? Sure. So, uh, do Springboard classes count towards your required honors credits? No, uh, it's a separate requirement. It's your your thesis or uh, capstone requirements. So you would still have to do the full required number of honors courses in addition uh, on your campus. Um, and then if we join Springboard, this is from uh, Godar, Godarv, uh, if we join Springboard, are we also required to do an honors program? Uh, well, no. Uh, I mean, Springboard can take the place of honors in your major, but again, that's going to depend on your major and on your campus. So you're going to hear me say it again, be sure to talk to your advisor about that. That's the most important advice there. Um, and then that last one was from uh, from Winter Green Allen. Hi, Winter. Um, can students work with faculty on their home campus while simultaneously enrolling in Springboard? Um, yes, they can. Um, they, they, they're sort of different things. So if a student is really ambitious and wants to do two different things, then yes, I definitely think we would support that. Uh, but it's not uh, not really required to, to do both of those. Um, I hope that's, uh, I hope I'm answering the question that was really asked. Um, um, yeah, I, I would also say that these. Go ahead, something please. that can be tricky about that is if the professor that the student's working with has one set of requirements and um, for Springboard, we have a different set of requirements. We 
we do not waive requirements for springboard because a student is also working with a faculty member who has given them a different set of instructions. Um, yeah. We're totally happy if they're getting mentored in their home department, um, but they still have to follow the springboard requirement and syllabus. Right. If you want to do both, it's great to do both. The student you got to do both. Yeah, the student who we have working now who's doing a photography project, she's working with a her photography professor on her campus and that professor is giving her great advice that you know that we wouldn't really know because we're not artists and so to us it's like oh great picture but the, the, the professor is really giving her some some good feedback um it's not necessary but i you know in that case it does help but the professor has is leaving all the requirements up to us of course because it's our class um, um and uh, just to uh, pick up on, on one more from ashna salim uh, one semester of the senior thesis course cannot, I, I assume you mean the springboard class, uh, that could not count for honors credit for Macaulay. It's, it's a separate requirement. And in any case, the, the springboard class is a two semester sequence. Uh, you, you cannot use one semester of it really for anything. Um, to Noam about the CUNY BA. So we've had several students who were CUNY BA and springboard. It's actually ideal for CUNY BA students, I think, because they, you know, they're all about interdisciplinarity, so they un understand that. Um, you know, you can be in a little thesis group with other students who, who are doing that, you know, sure, but we don't, we have, a, we have a Slack channel going and in our class and students communicate with each other that way. And you could certainly get in a group with other kids doing, a, a, doing CUNY BA, but it's not necessary. I think to add on to that, like if you are in CUNY BA and struggling with the thesis and you can't or don't want to do springboard, um, we could help to set up a group of CUNY BA students who are doing interdisciplinary theses. That would be something we'd want to try to set up in Club Macaulay or through a, another route. Um, springboard's not the only answer there. It's a good answer, but it's not the only answer. Yeah, so I'm just picking up on that. Noam is feeling a little, says I'm kind of confused about the difference between an honors thesis and a springboard. Uh, I put up a link much earlier uh, to the, the handbook uh, that gives all the options for fulfilling the Macaulay requirement. The springboard class is one of those options, um, but it is not the only option and it's not gonna work for everybody, but it is a great option for those people for whom it works. If you're already doing a thesis, you're already doing what you need to do. And I just put up the link for, again, for that event that's happening a week from Friday to Noam, since you came late, it's gonna be a, an event that profiles three different students who are doing springboard projects right now. And um, you can come and listen and see if you like what you hear. And we're, we'll talk a little bit more about springboard there too, but not the technical details like we are tonight. Um, I also see a question about um, if your major doesn't have any honors. So again, that would be a place to refer to the handbook and see your different options of which springboard is one. Um, but there are other ways that you can fulfill the requirement. Um, and also about uh, if you, um, I see this one from Sean and um, should you just ask your campus advisor? Yes, I would say you should ask your campus advisor um, about doing your honors classes and your thesis and independent research they will, your, your advisor will be able to give you specific and accurate information. Um, you know, we're giving kind of a, an overview and you should always make sure that you get correct information from your advisor about the particularities of your course of study. Um, I also wanted to talk about this question from um, Jadija about uh, if you take springboard, if your thesis will be specifically through the lens of humanities and political science. Um, no, no, we, um, you can do it in a variety of ways. The focus really is on taking your topic and being able to become an expert on it and speak about your topic to a broad audience. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that people approach their projects. We've had people from just about every discipline um, and we do not make you do a humanities or a political science or a history project. It is, um, it is really up to you. But it can't be super sciencey, so sciencey in a way that we can't understand it. Right, if, if it's it, like, like Dean Ugaritz and Professor Reese said, if you really want to do something that is really just aimed at people in your major discipline, um, 
like let's say the um, RL, if he, she just wanted to write the paper through her NOAA Crest um, Fellowship and just work on the paper with her PI in her lab, that would have been totally great, um, but it wouldn't have been a springboard project. So doing the science communication part of it um, was really what the springboard part of, of her work was about. Yeah, my, my, my first year at Macaulay, I let a student do a paper that was, she was a physics major. No, astronomy. And she wrote an astronomy springboard. I didn't understand it at all, at, at all. And she was really trying to make it understandable to me. I could see, and I could see, I could tell if, stu if sentences were grammatical. So it was a beautifully written paper, but I had no idea what it was about. And I actually had to send her to another faculty member on another campus to, to read it. Um, to make sure that what she was saying was right. And after that happened, we said, you know what, it has to be, she ha people have to write stuff in a way that the professors understand. <laughs> so that, that's, uh, that's why we have that. Okay. And for accountability buddies too, sorry. No, no worries. Um, okay, um, the time is now nearing seven. So I just wanted to close everything off. Um, thank you for answering all those questions. Um, I think there are a few more questions that we didn't get to answer. But don't worry, all those questions will be compiled. Um, we're going to answer those, um, put a doc together, and help spread that out and share it with everybody just to make sure all your questions are answered. Also, feel free to reach out if you have any questions that you didn't get to ask yet. Um, feel free to send those in. Um, lastly, I would just like to thank everyone. Thank you to all the panelists. Thank you to the alumni who came and presented their projects that were very interesting. Thank you to all the faculty members who helped put this together and to Scholars Council who also helped put this amazing event together. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Um, I just want, I'm gonna drop my email into um, the chat and you're free to reach out to me if you have questions that didn't get answered this evening. Um, I might not be able to answer all of them but I can find people who can. So um, always feel free to reach out to um, me in the academic affairs department um, and I hope that I get to work with some of you in Springboard. And thank you so much to the Scholars Council for putting together such a lovely and really, really well attended event. And thanks again to Ariel and Susan. Yes, so nice. Thank you. So nice to see you. Thank you guys. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.